Hello, in this video I want to show you about instancing in Unreal with Houdini Engine. In Houdini Java I already got a small setup, so here I have a grid with also some scattering points and then I will copy a model on it, so in this case the rubber point. So in the copy to points is something special and this is the first way of how I show instancing here. So in there we're going to enable the setting pack and instance. So this is a method on how we can instance instead of making new unique geometry. So next step is making a tool from this. So I'm going to select everything you see here and I'm going to go to assets, new digital asset, and I'm now going to quickly make a tool from this. Then we bring this into Unreal. So we can import our tool here and now we can drag this into our scene. So after a moment when it is done calculating, we will see our model with also that material here in Unreal. So the exact same result is here seen in Unreal. So here on the side, we can see that we have outputs and that we have instances. So we have our mesh instancer and we also here have the geometry from that instance itself. So now we can also like play around with that. So in this case, we have that rubber toy, but sometimes you want something that's already in the project. For example, here, a tree. So I can grab the tree and drop that in that slot. So now I have instanced that tree. So we control the placement of the tree with the Houdini tool. So I can also add variation by clicking on the plus icon. And I can, for example, now grab the other tree, the green one. And now we have different trees uh, in the scene here. So we have a few ways here to add some variation automatically. So these are now a nice set of trees. But I also want to show you another way of instancing. So here we took the rubber toy and instant that on certain positions. But I also want to directly access the trees. So here I have these two trees. But I directly want to use them in my system. So back in Houdini, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my tool that I made here. And I'm only going to copy paste the part with the grid and the scattering points. So I'm going to copy paste that outside of the tool. And I'm going to make like a new tool uh, with attribute instancing. So here we have our scattering points. And on these points, I want to add the information on what model they should be instancing. So I'm going to create an attribute. And in that attribute, I'm going to store that value. So first of all, we need to give the attribute the proper naming. So the Houdini engine will recognize it. So we're going to use Unreal instance. And then here we need to fill in a path, so we need to change the type to a string so we can fill in a path to the to the model to instance. For the path itself, we're going to go to Unreal, right click and say copy reference. So with that reference or path, we can paste that into, an, into our attribute. And with that setup, we can now go to our geometry spreadsheet and we can see that each point has the information about which model it should be, see which should use as instance. So now let's test this out. So we only have a few points here. And now test this out by making a new tool. So a new tool, instance attributes, and we're going to import that into Unreal here as well. So now the same process, we're going to drag the asset in our scene. We have then our trees automatically assigned on the points that we had in Houdini. So here we can see that we also have an output instance so we have also that output there. What is interesting to notice here is that with our copy to points method, we had also that geometry also being generated because we used the geometry from Houdini. So here I'm going to quickly refer to settings. So here we have that unique geometry generated as well, where in my other tool, we only have the instance because we don't need new geometry here. We can also take blueprints or other Unreal assets to instance. So it's not limited to models. We can also do, for example, like blueprints or particles, as long as we can get a path to that, to that asset. So again, here you could also press the plus icon and add variation, but I want to show you another way of adding variation with attributes. And in Houdini, we can actually control variation way better. So here I'm going to take my other tree, the green tree, and I'm going to grab the reference here. And we're going to jump here into Houdini. And in here, instead of using that add create attribute, 
I actually want to create a random attribute. So I want to randomly select the red, red, orange tree and the green tree. So in that attribute randomizer, you of course need to give it the name Unreal Instance. And in there, we want to make sure we are setting different string or path. So we're going to go to custom discrete and under custom discrete, we can change the type to a string value. So now we have the option to then fill in the paths we have. So here we can make as much models as we want to. In this case, I only have two. So I'm going to fill in two models here. So we can fill in two paths. I'm going to copy paste them here. So I already copied them. And we're also going to copy the previous one here and copy paste that in here as well. So now these two are ready to go. So I can bring in an output just to make sure that this is my output and not the other one. So let's save that. Let's jump into Unreal, rebuild our asset. And now we should see different trees or a variation in our tree. So we have that orange and the green ones. Now with that set up, I want to actually make a more custom menu to easily access these instances. So I'm going to go to assets and edit a property of my asset. So in here, I'm going to go to parameters and we're going to create custom parameters or sliders that we could use inside of Unreal. So here I can, for example, grab, for example, the seed value of this randomness. So every time I change that value, we will have like randomly placement of the tree. So if I go to options, grab the seed value, this will now be accessed in Unreal. So once I hit apply, it's like fully linked to the tool. So now also here we can grab, for example, the path, so the location, and we can also grab the weight. So the weight is interesting. So if I increase the weight, the model will be appearing more. If I lower the weight, it will be appearing less. So now I can just grab, for example, the paths, give it also a proper naming like model number one. And we'll also grab the other one, model number two. And we can also grab here the weight value. So we can change how much this model is appearing in my system. So pressing apply, and then they are linked together. So now in Unreal, we're gonna hit rebuild again. And now if everything goes right, we will see, we will see here our menu with our parameters. So we can play around with, for example, the seed. So we should see variations now when I change the seed. So the trees are now on different positions every time I play around with that. And we also then have here our other parameters like the pad and also the weight. So the weight, if I increase the weight, we will see more of this tree. So the green one is now appearing more than the other one. And then if I increase, if I lower this or put this to zero, we barely will see that tree appearing. So we can control a bit with some sliders where or how much they should be appearing. Now, also we have this pad, but we can also drag and drop actually our asset to that pad. So if I just hold my mouse and drag an asset there, I can automatically assign that there. So here, these are now the same colors. So, but you can just drag their assets in there. So if you share the tool with your teammates or team members, they can just drag in their custom assets and have them placed automatically by Houdini. So of course you can still use like the instance outputs, but you can build a custom interface for that as well. So of course you can now start expanding this menu. So we can go back in our Houdini setup. For example, I can uh, expose the scale of my scatterer. So we can go back in Unreal and now I have a scaling value and I can scale my trees up bigger or I can, for example, make them smaller. And here is also then sort of like a small forest scene that you can quickly create by just scattering around trees. And that was it for this video. So I showed you two ways of instancing with the copy two points. This is mainly useful when you want to bring a model from Houdini inside of Unreal. So it will import that as well and instance for you. But most of the time, if you already have models, blueprints, things set up in Unreal, we want to use attribute instancing. So we can directly say what models should be assigned to which position. So artists don't have to figure it out. They will automatically be set up for them. So that's sort of like a bit of the difference between those two. So but most often attribute instancing is quite popular overall. So that was it for this video. I hope you learned something and thank you for watching.